dead. Like, like to the point where I do. It's like, what are you much. doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Stay right there. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, well, stay over there. You don't just get in somebody else's lane, sir. Thank you. <laughs> That is, he doesn't <laughs> You're in this lane! And you're not! That's right! One lane! Literally me. My Fast lane, not yours! Fast and Furious pre-cut. Yeah, you're not Fast and Furious. You're about to get it. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. You you do you boo, right? Like it's a it's a massive thing, and yeah. so I want to see his thing. like to tease okay. everybody a little bit just tickling it a little bit <laughs> I could be brown I could be blue I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. You watching Point Dexter Lounge? You already know. You're watching Point Dexter Lounge for the unity. Why don't you set aside an hour or two? We'll have a few drinks and a cup of coffee I don't drink. Hi, you're watching Poindexter Lounge. I, I'm choking on chicken. Um, hey, you're watching Poindexter. That's great. I don't. You are watching Poindexter Lounge. That's great. I don't. You are watching Poindexter. Thanks for the lights, Jay. Like onions and you're watching point dexter that's great i don't and now i'll make the point better this joint's clever in the lounge with point dexter so point dexter lounge you know that we can get it in and now i'm headed up like i'm led zeppelin hi you're watching point dexter lounge do you like nerd stuff yeah then you'll love this you never know what might happen or who might show up at the lounge i just want to thank you for for being here and being my friend it's always good to have someone you could count on. And I'm glad you're that for me. That's great. I don't. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! Give me a bottle of anything and a glazed donut. To go. Go, 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 go. What's up, nerd family? Welcome once again to the Point Extra Lounge. My name is Enosh. And it's great to have you with me in the mobile lounge today on the drive home. Good to see all of you. Well, I, I can't see all of you, but you can see me. And so, you know what? We get the job done. So welcome to the lounge. If this is your first time to the lounge, just know that the Poindexter Lounge is 
a place for nerds. It's a place where you and me and all of us can get together and talk about the things that we love, things like TV shows, movies, games, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books, superheroes, toys, and so much more. And if those things get you excited, then, hey, you found the right place and you are in the right place. So why don't you hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. And uh, maybe tell somebody that you're watching uh, Point Dexter Lounge, you know. Maybe uh, share that on your social media of choice, you know, and tell people, hey, I'm watching this crazy Enosh guy uh, on Point Dexter Lounge, and you should be too. So there you go. Hey, it is good to see you all, and uh, good to be back in the lounge. It's been an eventful week for me this week. I have gotten a lot done this week. Uh, so I apologize that we have not been on air uh, as usual the last couple of days. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you got to take care of stuff, too, you know. And so uh, we're getting some of that stuff done. Actually prepping and getting ready for being able to go back and do studio shows uh, again and be in the studio because uh, I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to that and, and you like that. And I like that better, too. The sound's better. You know, everything's better when it, when it comes to that. Being in the studio is so much more um uh, what we want to do than having to do uh, the drive shows, you know. But I figure it this way. I've got the time right now. We'll do some drive home shows, and then uh, we'll resume our our regular broadcast um, ways. All right, real quick, I do want to say hi to people in the chat. What's up, Hunter? What's up, Laser Luke? What's up, Kenneth? What's up, Kenneth Crowley? Good to see you, buddy. What's up, Triton? What's up, Patrick? Uh, who else is here? Patrick again. There's Lisa Zook again. You guys are having some kind of conversation going on there. What's up, Narcosa Nostra? What's up, uh, uh, and Wampa? I think is how is how we pronounce that. But, uh, hey, what's up, Ryan Hartwell's here. You do suck is here. All right, the whole gang is here. We're all here, and we're all ready to have some fun and talk about some fun stuff. And, of course, to do that, I've got a couple of people here with me, and uh, I'm going to bring them in right now. And that, of course, is Austin and Nerd Costa Nostro. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you today? What's up, man? How's, how have you been? Long time no see. How have I been? Um, I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> how you been, Austin? That's good. How you been? I've been, I've been all right. I've been all right. I'm, uh, I'm surviving. Been a little sick on and off, but I'm still, I'm still here. So that's good. <laughs> all right, all right. And how about you, Mr. Nerdcosa Nostra? How are you, sir? Doing good, doing good. Better than I deserve. There you go. There you go. I tell you what, I've had, uh, had a good week. I've had a really good week. It's been, uh, it's been a long week, but it's, it's still been good. I've been. Well, I'm exhausted, though. I tell you what, I think I'm ready to go to bed early tonight. <laughs> One more day before the weekend. That's right. I got a big weekend. Hey, somebody just felt just popped up in the back. I said in the back, but I said I saw Bradley at the same time. So in the Brad. What's up, Bradley? What's up, guys? How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. 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 What's up, baby? Hey. So we got some stuff to talk about uh, today. This is the first thing I want to talk about is uh, this right here, because obviously it's on people's minds. There's nothing wrong with this, Triton. <laughs> I'm not sorry, saying there's not anything. Sorry. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just, RJ. I think people are making a bigger deal out of it than necessary. It's not like this is some sort of brand new, never thought of design. I mean, it's very, right. very close no. to the, if not exactly like Alex Ross is, um, you know, from his work. And we saw Brandon wearing it on the TV show. So people are, I think, are two, there's two camps here. People are making a big deal of it. But then, then you have the people who are um, just picking it apart and comparing it to, pre, you know, previous Superman um, yeah. symbols from other live action um, movies. So, I mean, that leaves the three, right? Henry, Brandon, and and Chris, Christopher Reeves. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, again, this isn't this isn't some revolutionary design. So, I don't know why people are acting like it is. People do the same thing with Batman. Every time there's a new yeah. Batman film, they yeah. bitch about the logo for months, and the film comes out, and then you don't hear anything about the logo. It, it, you know, it's all. Uh, I don't. I think it's doing. I think Gunn's doing 
in my opinion, he's kind of doing himself a disservice by constantly being on social media and little drips and drabs to work work everybody up. At some point, dude, just log off, make your movie, and let it speak for itself if if you believe it's that great. So, I mean, I'm I'm gonna see it. I'm a Superman fan. I'm a DC fan. Yeah, man. Um, I'll give it a chance. Um, but I mean, the the amount of uh, social media traffic when this uh, when the image got put out there, or at least it got put out, leaked out, whatever, uh, I was—it's just like everyone, calm down. This isn't something right. new. So. No, and, and, see, that's, and that's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. Is that is that this is not like you said? This is not a new logo. Is it? Is it the Superman logo that that I would just like? If you ask me, Enosh, what logo would you like it to be? Well, no, it's not necessarily that, but it's. You know, it's a it's a choice, and it's definitely a legitimate choice. It's a legitimate Superman logo, uh, and I'm sorry. I mean, Triton knows I love him, but you know, like I, I just call it the way it is. You know, Triton and I talk, uh, uh, you know, offline as well, and I just no, there's there's nothing wrong with this logo, and like just because just because it's attached to this movie and this director and everything, people are making a bigger deal of it than it than it is. Like I'm I'm sorry, but I am so over. So over Karen any more literally about who the frick directs a movie. Like I just really don't care anymore. Like as long as it's a good story and somebody directs it for you know can direct their way out of a paper bag, I'm fine. I'm 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 tired of 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 watching and listening to fights and having to you know go on to social media and, and hear just about how things suck for no other reason than they exist. That doesn't make one lick of sense whatsoever. There's nothing wrong with this logo. Anybody, like I love the Kingdom Come logo. I've got, I've got a, I've got, or I've already got a Superman shirt with this logo on it, and I've got a Superman shirt that's Superman. I've worn both of them on this on the the channel, and I've got a super, I've got one that's just the logo. Yes, it's the black, you know, background because it's the Kingdom Come Superman. But I also have, I also have a, a shirt of Alex Ross's Superman with this logo on his chest, and there's nothing wrong with it. So, so I'm sorry, but just saying this logo sucks or this logo or you know f this logo, Triton. I'm sorry, I, I gotta I gotta say I think you're wrong on this. I'm gonna call it the way that I see it. You don't have to like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it, and that's fine. I'm not forcing anybody to do that. But I'm saying like all this stuff about like, like it sucks just because it exists. No miss me with that because this is a legitimate logo that has appeared for years in, in some form i mean it's not exact but we all know what this is anybody looking at this can tell what this is and just because james gunn is using it doesn't mean that like all of a sudden that it's a bad thing i mean james gunn likes comics that's why he's doing this that's why he's good at what he does yeah. i think we can they're in all day entire... long in personal issues but let's talk about like the actual issue at hand it's a Superman movie, and he likes Superman. And this legitimate. I think I during this think entire that. process, you're just going to see people kick and scream like whiny babies and children because literally yep. everything that comes out with this movie is bad and horrible and awful because it's not what they want. And it's going to be right. some very performative BS because, again, people just have to kick and scream the entire way leading up to this online when, again you talking about it in general is feeding engagement for it anyway so if you don't like something don't talk about it because again you're just feeding into it even more because you're talking about it they're winning either way I don't understand why people don't get that or like that. we've talked about right be rational be open don't be so over exaggerative and here's the saddest part too is a lot of these people that are the ones criticizing all of this and being all that it's it's like the tables have turned they're being as ugly and as disgusting and as mean as yep. people were to them about Snyder's movies. Oh, I F that world. F that Superman. F that universe. You know, like, it's, right. it's so sad how we've, we've become the exact thing that we hate and that we fought against for how many years? The it's difference gross. is is that we, a lot of uh, the proportion of, of people have seen Snyder's films in DC and have, you know, seen actual things that he's made to uh you know make their minds up on something the difference is right. people have seen nothing of james gunn in dc and i think it's funny that people you know th it, like i said earlier th they do the same thing with batman a logo does not represent and does not 
have anything to do with the quality of a story um, right. and the quality of the film at all. It's it's a logo. Um, get over it at the end of the day because it has nothing to do with how good the movie can be or how bad the right. movie can be. And also, I thought it was funny that a lot of people complaining about the logo really love a, a certain Superman show right now called My Adventures with Superman, and it's basically the same logo, too. Like, it's very, very low, similar. Pretty much, like, yeah. Which, which makes sense, because when they were talking about how, you know, these things are going to cross over, you're going to see, you know, similarities and stuff like that, like, I'm, I'm totally down with that. And I loved the show. And RJ knows. RJ knows. That, like, I had my own feelings about it. Like, I, I was I the only not, one to I did, that show. I did because not I like that review. Everyone was like, oh, it's just horrible. It's just trash. Well, it's I will awful. still say, I will still say that they did a <laughs> I was horrible the only job. Person I will say that they did a horrible job of revealing it and promoting it at first because the final product did not match the energy that they came out with it, that it was just going to be kind of stupid and silly and quirky and stuff. It was quirky. But it wasn't as bad as they made it out to be. And Lois wasn't as annoying as they made her out to be at first. And stuff. So, so, you know. And, but it was fine. But RJ, yeah, you know. Like, I, I, I had major issues with some of that stuff. But, again, I can admit when I'm wrong. And I can also admit when, like, something is good. And I ended up liking it. And so, like, with, with this, I just don't understand why people got so much time to waste to gripe and complain about a logo for a movie that, like we just said, there's there's nothing out there. Like Bradley said, there's there's nothing out there to to, to look at and say this is wrong or this is bad or you well, know, I don't whatever. Think people are coming out now and saying it looks awful because it's literally the exact same logo from the suit. It's just the suit on like a two dimensional plane mm-hmm. without the texture. That's it. Right. Well, we know about it's the exact same logo we saw like two, like a month or two ago. We've known so, about this logo for months now. Yeah. Either. Right. Yeah, I mean, we saw on the, on the place cards. I mean, that's when it first we f- knew what was an idea what it was going to look like. Then we obviously yeah. saw the suit. Now we're seeing this. I mean, again, right. I don't, I don't mind again because I'm an Alex Ross fan. He's probably my, in my easily my top five comic artist um, for for Kingdom Come. And even though the one brand Brandon War um, wasn't an exact. Um, replica of what alex ross had done it was very close if i i mean if i had a preference i like the red and black um versus this gold but again i, I like the call back to the those that we've already seen in previous iterations whether that's the comics or even branding wearing on tv so i mean yeah i mean people are hanging on something they haven't even seen yet i mean how can you dislike something if you haven't seen it yet so and, and if you and if you don't like it and if you don't and if you don't want to be a part of it turn the dial Turn the dial. Otherwise, you're right. just spending so right. much of your energy right. hating on something that you haven't seen or you know you're not going to see. Well, then turn the dial and focus on things you do like and talk about those things. Right. right. Hey, Austin, do you have that blurb that I sent uh, from David Corn Sweat that I texted you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have it right here. Uh, you want me so, to read it now? So- yeah, so this is interesting, right? Because we have not heard much about, like, what the story is, you know, like, what kind of Superman character this Superman is going to be. We haven't gotten a lot, but David Cornsweet did an interview or, or like, gave a, a, a statement, and this was it. And I, this, this statement right here gave me so much hope and faith for his Superman. Because, yeah, I, and, I, and I just like it. So go ahead and read it, Austin. I agree. All right, so David Cornswit, he was uh, recently at a uh, Q&A event for one of his new films that out that's out on Prime right now. Of course, he was there with the cap and all covered up to not show too much, but they did ask him about Superman. He opened up about his approach to the, how his approach to the character differs from past interpretations. He said, in some previous live-action adaptations of Superman, He's been, I don't know if simplified is the right word, but something around there. But there is a complexity to Superman that is very prevalent in the comic books. It's just a matter of bringing it out, which is tricky to do. He's a complex dude. People think Kryptonite can beat him, but the only thing that can really beat Superman is Superman. His own noggin messing, messing with him. His own moral choices. When you have that to start with, the storytelling can really delve into something rich. 
I love that. I love that because he's absolutely right. Is that the only thing, you know, because people talk about, oh, Superman's susceptible to magic, and magic can beat him. So, like, nobody, and they, they miss the whole point. Like, they think that anybody who uses magic can just beat Superman. And that's not the case, nor has it been the case ever. And it's not even, you know, it's not even a given that if you have kryptonite, you're going to beat Superman. You know, that's not the point. The point right. is, Superman beats Superman, and Superman <laughs> wins as Superman, because Superman is brilliant. People act like he just punches his way out of everything, and he doesn't. The guy literally, I mean, in the comics, for decades, he goes up to the Fortress of Solitude. He's got a, you know, he's a scientist. He conducts all kinds of experiments. He's got all kinds of technology up there. And I love the fact that they have talked about that this is going to be have some loose basis on All-Star Superman. Because that's what he does in All Star Superman. He's up there working on stuff and and gives Lois powers, except you know for a day, you know and stuff. And and uh, I mean it's just brilliant stuff. And so yeah, to hear David talk about Superman that way, that gives me a lot of hope because that's who Superman should be. And I and I don't think that Superman has to be like I don't want Superman to be super cheesy. Like the Silver Age, okay, stuff. I don't want that. And I don't think the Superman has to be, like, super serious all the time either. I think that there needs to be a balance <laughs> with a character like funny. Superman. There needs to be a balance with a character like Superman, where there's, where there's both that serious, he does have some darkness, he does have to deal with real-life things and, and some, you know, some craziness, but... At the end of the day, he also has his moments like where we talked about we talked about for the last couple of weeks, where like it's okay for Superman to save a cat in a tree. It's okay. It's all right, guys. He is Superman after all, for God's sake. You know, like we don't have to change it forever. That you know he's got to be you know some angry guy. You know, it's just... yeah. Like always, people like to gatekeep Superman and what he can or can't do, and how. Uh cringe or not cringe it is by him saving a cat in a tree or saving a grandma or to doing this or saving Lois from a falling building. As long as he's saving people, that's all I want to see because it's, you know I know people like Man of Steel and all those movies but the lack of Superman saving people is a problem for me. Mm. And I want to see that represented in live action. I don't care who the hell he saves as long as he's saving people. That's the character. And I just don't get why people like the same people that gate uh, gate kept Batman at the end of the Batman. Oh, why is he saving people at the, at the end of the movie? He's he's acting like Superman. Batman can't be like Superman. It's the same people. Yeah, I mean, again, I think there's just a lot of negativity from certain people and a certain crowd just because it's not what they want and. They're acting no better than the same people that acted that way in 2013 and 2016. It's just on the exactly. opposite spectrum. You know? And again, that's your prerogative. I just don't understand living life that way. I think it's a sad existence to live your life that way. But, I yeah. mean, it's your business. You know? Um, I, also, I also think it's sad for the people who, who literally, like you said, they've already gone through this. They know what it's like to have somebody just mock a movie that they love for no good reason or to put it down or yep. to attack them or to threaten them or to say horrible disparaging things about them simply because they like a director or a film or whatever or a character or to even or wish death upon certain people and their directors and right it's... <laughs> so so how is it that this fandom that i've been a part of many of you have been a part of all of a sudden like turned on a dime and it's like yep. oh this, this this behavior that we have said is wrong all this time, it's okay now because we're doing it and they did it and, to us, so now it's okay. No, and that's showing and that you act like you have yeah. the mentality of a, of a middle schooler. Like, that's exactly like, yeah, the, That's the saddest part is they think we're justified because it happened to us. Right. No, it's not justified. It's, it's, it's actions that you should not, you know, act on. But... Uh, Hey there, uh, we got a $2 super chat here from uh, Punk Black. What's up, Punk Black? It says, hey, Enosh, RJ, uh, Nerd Coast and Nostra, Austin, Bradley, and Chat. Hello, Rock on. Man. Let's go. Oh, show. Oh, show. Oh, show. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, show. There's just, so much to talk know, about look, today, look, by there's, the way. There's, a, there's a bunch of different Superman logos out there. <laughs> I don't understand why we're just going to hate on one, right? There's, there's, there's yeah. something different. I've got a logo that's on my arm that I would not want to see in live action. It's the classic logo, right, that's on all the merchandise and all the stuff, but there's a logo for merchandising. For me, it's too clean to actually put on a suit. You know what I mean? It's the, the edges are too straight. That's what I don't like about Brandon, or not Brandon Routh, um, Tyler Hecklin's suit, because the S is just too, it, it's too perfect. It's, it, there's, there's no stretch in it. There's no nothing. It's just a plastic plate. It, you know, I, I don't like it. But, you know, at the end of the day, we've got a Superman movie coming out that we don't know a lot about right now. Let's wait and see what happens. Right. And, yep. and, and, you know, like, obviously, the like you just said, the logo is not going to look like this. And I get it. Look, I love the Man of Steel logo. Don't get me wrong. I lo- That is probably my favorite in live action, definitely. I mean, but that it's, it's a beautiful logo to me. No, but I've seen people mock that logo. I've seen people mock the Man of Steel logo and, uh, and put it down or whatever. Now, I love it. But that doesn't mean that that can be the only logo that ever is. Like, I, I don't understand. It's like, Snyder fans have talked about Christopher Reeve fans for the last few years and about the gatekeeping that's been done and, like, oh, Christopher Reeve can be the only Superman ever again. And, you know, and, like, we, we only want to see this outfit and everything. And yet now we're doing that exact same thing with Henry Cavill and with, and with his Superman and with his portrayal and his costume and everything else. And it's like, we can't have anything yeah. else. No, it needs to be this or else. Nothing else. Times change, man. Like, mm-hmm. there, there, needs, there needs to be evolution going on or it's going to get stale. Yeah. Now, I will say, I just want to add on, too, um, the, that um, symbol came out at CinemaCon here this week, which... Obviously, Disney is live presenting right now. There's already a lot of stuff going on. Um, but they did have a video message from James Gunn from the set of Superman um, at CinemaCon. He did say that uh, he's, uh, they had a video I... message okay. from James Gunn uh, from the set uh, where he, he said that he's shooting right now. Everything's going great and, and fine. And that next year they'll be there with the whole cast to present the movie. Uh, and they even referred to next summer that there was going to be a massive marketing push. They're calling it the Summer of Superman. Um, so it's it's going to yeah. be really cool, really cool to see. From what from what they're describing, what we're basically going to be seeing, like they're going to be pushing that movie pretty much on the level of like a Barbie. Of last what, yeah, it's going to be. It's going to like, be you're as gonna it see, should be. You're going to see Superman everywhere next year. It's as be it crazy. should be, it's going to be like when Man of Steel came out. You know, the Superman merch everywhere. And you know, that's the cool Heck, thing about these yeah. about these movies, right? Kids going back to school, they get the Superman notebooks, the Superman pencils, the super, you know, like that's where right. these movies really get ahead in the marketing is is you know, especially a summer movie like that. You know, kids yeah. go see it. Then I they mean, they're, 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 here's a, here's a problem that I have. Here's a problem that I have. Okay, because Fourth One Thousand knows I love him. Triton knows that I love him. But like, and like anybody else who comes in here saying that this logo is is, is trash. I just gotta ask the question: Why didn't? Why wasn't anybody saying that Alex Ross's logo was trash before this? Yeah, so the Kingdom Come logo is trash. So, yeah, right. The, the, the forty years of uh, I think what you know, 30, 40 years that the comic has been out and that logo has been out and a reoccurring image and Superman imagery like that's uh, okay. I mean, yeah, and it's, it's a hill to die on. Herald it is. It's always been uh, Bradley. That that comic has always been talked about in reverence and respect and I mean Alex Ross came up with I mean like seriously I don't want to be the guy I don't want to be the person standing back and telling Alex Ross that his design is trash right that's all I'm saying you guys can like whatever you like but you know what I asked the question are you saying it because you really haven't liked it this whole time but just never said a word or is it simply because of James Gunn because if it is about James Gunn let it go. It, that's not worth it. I mean, to me, anyways. Uh, look, we got uh, Anthony. What's up, Anthony and RJ? Hey, what's up? What's up? No, uh, not not you know not this I mean? like, not this guy. I mean, Superman seventy eight <laughs> was one of the first Superman logos I remember from my childhood because 
I mean, even though it was before my time, that was still the Superman I grew up with, even in the, you know, 80s and 90s. But then when Alex, Alex Ross's was the next one that I was exposed to because it came, he, it was first introduced um, in the early 90s, like 93, 94 ish. Mm -hmm. um, okay. yeah. And I remember it was just uh, in just his interpretation of the characters from his artwork. I mean, I would love to see that type of stuff on live action, but I mean, for me, it's always been like in that top three, he, my favorite emblems. So, he did I mean, work. Like I said, well, I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see that it's, I mean, it's not an exact copy, but it's pretty close um, that it's being used for a live action film. But again, my preference is just the, the red and black uh, as he had it, which I understand they're not going to use exactly what Alex Ross had, but like I said, it's a pretty close interpretation of his artwork and I'm all for that. So. Yeah, fourth. I mean, fourth. It, fourth one thousand. It, it looks like that logo. I mean, it's the exact yeah, same logo. Yeah, like it's. I mean, it's, it's, it's I, 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 I mean, I like, close. I like all Superman logos so far in live action. Other than, I mean, I wish Smallville did have a logo, um, but you know, it's, it is what it is. But you know, I like the logo. It's the one. The I mean, same one he, and the same one he showed us last month when he showed the. The chess piece for Superman last month. I mean, the abundance of logos that have been in superhero films uh, in the past, you know, thirty years, uh, it, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't have any effect in the film at all. Has no effect on the quality of the film. Has nothing to do with it. So I don't know why these why people are uh, trashing the logo. How many different logo logos has Batman had? Like Jesus Christ, ten thousand. The like, most like ten thousand. Every new iteration. Every, every new Batman and every every. And he's character. had nipples. And he has nipples he as well. Has nipples. Yeah, every time a comic book artist draw Batman, it's always a brand new logo, brand new costume, anything. Are we? Same are we speaking? Same for Dick in... Grayson, for same for Batgirl, same for Timothy. Whatever. Every 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 Bat family is you always get a new costume every time they draw them. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I'll be looking for it, bro. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. I mean, well, if we're speaking, I think we're speaking in general terms, but if we're strictly focusing on the live action film, I think he's had six, so just as many as Superman's had, almost. So, yeah. What's, I mean, it's no big deal. E each version of the character is going to have what their own look and style. I mean, right. No, I mean, no one really complained when we saw, I mean, even Christian Bale, his suit changed twice from one yeah, movie the, to the next. They should have just stayed with the one from Batman Begins. <laughs> well, but still, the, even yeah. the same, even within the same trilogy story, the character changed his suit and the logo right. changed. Oh yeah, so, yeah, 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 I mean, it's not, it's, it's really not that big a deal. No, it's not. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of things, though, did anybody watch Heroes? No, I know. I know. Uh, no. Uh, didn't they, you all, you didn't, all didn't they bring back the show Georgia. back in 2017? Uh, no, I remember Heroes. I remember everyone talking about it in the office, yeah. uh, and it was good. And I remember people saying how it was good for a season or two. Then it yep. really started going downhill, and then they eventually canceled it. It was just one of those shows I could never get into. But, I mean, it, I remember it was a crazy okay. thing. Once that, uh, next, that when, it, when the episode would drop the next day, I think like everyone was, was in the first 10 minutes of their morning talking about Heroes. I was just like, yeah, I'm okay being out of the loop on this one. I'm good. Heroes was a great show. That first season was fire, man. Heroes was such a great show that first season. And then, yes, it just completely died. It was almost like the writers just like all got together for seasons two and three or whatever, and they were just like, um, up, hey, yeah. how can we just, like, ruin this? Like, I mean, like, there was all these storylines. It was almost like they pulled a J.J. Abrams before J.J. Abrams was pulling J.J. Abrams. When did when, did when did when heroes come out? Because they will, I feel like it might have been affected by the writer strikes back in like the 2010s. Uh, no, this is early 2000s. Was it early 2000s? Okay. Yeah. It was, I, I think um, it, was, it it was from September 25th, 2006 through February 8th, 2010. Oh yeah, the writer strike was a thing back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. A 2008, yeah, yeah. what, 2008, 2009? But it wasn't, it wasn't about the, it, it was about the quality, though. So, I mean, like... Oh, yeah, the budget, yeah. I, I get the writer's strike would put things behind, but the thing is, when the writers came back to work, like, it still sucked. Like, the writers... They, they could not, they could not get the show back on track. And it, here's why. 
because they set up all the characters in the first season. Because what what the idea, the premise of Heroes is, is that an event is coming that that or event happens that like starts to uh, awaken powers and everybody. It's almost like an X Men kind of thing, right? It's almost like a muted a mutation kind of gene kind of thing, similar, right? Uh, and so the thing is, like, all these people are awakening to powers, and then you had this one guy, Siler, played by Zachary Quinto. That was, this was his breakout role before he became Spock. Um, he played a, a guy named uh, uh, Siler, and he could steal other people's powers. So he was the ultimate villain in the fact that he was going around season one, and what he would do is he would use his finger, and he would basically cut off the top of people's heads and take their brains out, and ingest it, and he would get their power. So he was, like, building up all these powers. The problem was they built it up, built it up, built it up to, like, a, a, a confrontation, but once they beat Siler, Siler, uh, Siler, there was nowhere else to go. So when season two came, they tried to make Siler, like, a, a good guy and, like, change it, and it, it just never it, it just never worked. So the, the okay, so the writer the the one that would have impacted this was from 0708, started in November, ended in November 2007, ended February 2008, and looking at as far as what shows were impacted, Heroes is listed for shows with a shortened season. They were supposed which was season two. They were supposed to be 24 episodes. There were only Damn. 11. Whew. Jesus so they so, that, so in season one they had twenty three episodes. Season two got impacted and only did eleven. Season three did a two like part two season. Part so the season, first part yeah. was thirteen, then they did twelve, and then the last season they did eighteen episodes. So God, yeah, they would have been an impact. I mean, they would have been impacted on season two directly. Um, but after that, season season three aired in September twenty September twenty. Oh my gosh, September 22nd, 2008. So depending upon what they had written beforehand, and they had, what, six, seven months to do anything for season three yeah. after the strike. So I wonder if the show is going to well, come back. And then back. they brought it back. They, they brought, brought it, it back. back yeah. Redemption. Yeah, and, it, and that wasn't good. I tried to watch that, and it just, no. It yeah, wasn't. yeah. So yeah. now they're talking about bringing it back. Again. I wonder if they're going to bring it back on a on NBC because that's when the show airs. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, Austin, Austin, where did that uh, uh, article say that they're bringing it to? Oh, oh I'm, 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 no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was, uh, I was muted. My bad. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm looking right now, blah, 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 on Cliff's Revival. Um, that's a I good question. It was, it, it, I mean, I wonder where it will air on, because the first, the first show came out on NBC. Yeah. And, My know, guess is, for, yeah, yeah, Universal, NBC. Huh, yeah, makes sense. Okay. So, we're getting that, and then uh, then there's another show uh, that's coming back as well, that I think I sent you. Oh, oh, that's Melrose Place. Now you guys are all probably way too young for Melrose. Oh my gosh! No, I'm, I remember Melrose Place, nine hundred two Beverly Hills, nine hundred two one zero. No, that's my yeah, that's my time. Never Dude, that, that's though. right. Okay, so me and Nerd Costa Nostra that are gonna have uh, we're, we're the gonna same, have a moment here. Yeah, we're the same generation, homie. Yep. So we watched like we watched Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero, and then they spun it off into Melrose Place, folks. And Melrose Place was a. How would you explain Melrose Place, Nerd Coast Nostra? It was tr I mean, it was tr it was trying to to take you. It was almost as if they were trying to build a bridge for from your time on nine from from your time you spent on nine hundred two one zero for the hills nine hundred two one zero from as hey teenager this that but now we're going to bring you into young adulthood and young adulthood topics with Melrose Place. So it was almost as if they were trying to bridge it as, this is where you're going to be going from. So as far much as drama. Going. Yeah, it was. So much drama. And the, yeah, yeah, it was it was something else. Yeah, the, yeah Heather there was, Locklear. It was a, yeah, Heather Locklear, yeah, yeah. Um, Daphne Zuniga. Uh, yeah. 
And then uh, what was funny was, uh, what's her name? Uh, who, I can't remember uh, what was her, her character on the show, but she uh, she went on to other stuff. But, like, she played the, the one chick who ended up, uh, remember she had the gash on the side of her head? Do you remember that reveal? Yeah, it's it's been a minute. Everybody thought she was dead or whatever. They thought she was dead. She was, like, dating Michael, the guy who was married. Yep, there was all yep. this drama going on and stuff. And they, everybody thought that she was dead. And then she came back, and she was, like, completely fine. And then she looks in the bathroom mirror, and she pulls off her wig, and there's, like, this huge gash scar thing along the side of her head. And you're like, oh, my God. It was, like, this huge reveal. And, yeah, uh, you're really you're really testing my memory here. I mean, we're talking like nine. I think what ninety two, ninety three. Yeah, <laughs> ninety two. Yeah. This ninety two. This show started. Um, that was yeah, the big thing, though. That was that was the big one, though. That that like, you know, like everybody remembers about Melrose Place was that big reveal about what's her name having you know coming back and having that you know big gash on the side of her head. And then she was crazy. She was like literally crazy and trying to kill people and stuff. And this show ended with them blowing up the apartment complex. Melrose. Kimberly. Kimberly Shaw was was the Kimberly. Yeah. Kimberly Shaw was the. Um, oh my gosh! I can't believe I, it's Seth. I'm even remembering this stuff. Um, I can't remember the actress's name, but that that was the character name. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And so then they blew up Melrose Place to end it. Yeah. Uh, and then apparently they had a, some kind of renewal on the CW a couple of years ago, but I never even heard. I, mean, I didn't I know, know about that. I didn't know about that. Oh, yeah. You know what? I take that back because they because they had an actual show, and I think that it was connected somehow, and somehow they brought the people on, but I didn't see that. Now remember uh, they read. Now remember they tried redoing uh, Beverly Hills 90210. They were just calling it 90210. I remember they tried yeah, doing they, that, um, which it obviously didn't work out either. Um, no. But and, now, and for and for the young people on and for the young people on the panel or in the chat, I, I don't recommend watching these shows just because from a time they don't they're not gonna do well they, as far as they didn't time age has well. Passed. They didn't yeah, age well. Thank no. you. <laughs> they, they're not gonna age well at all. I agree you're you're gonna watch so mood watch these and think, oh my gosh, people actually this was a popular TV show then. I, I've seen some of nine hundred two one zero with you know from when I was growing up. My show my grandma used yeah. to watch another scene and yeah it was. <laughs> Interesting. Well, it's definitely a product of its time, right? You know, and okay. go watch Batman one. and Robin. You'll 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 have a much better time. Listen, I that's crazy. I, I, that I is crazy. Says. Batman and Listen. Robin. That's crazy. And you know, and, and you know, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's telling the truth, uh, probably uh, with that. Probably but not. yeah, I mean, I, there there are definitely those hardcore fans out there that are for Melrose Place and Beverly Hills Nine Two One Zero. I mean, those were those were really popular in the day. So. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, so now apparently we're getting a new hero series, and we're getting a Melrose Place series. And the Melrose Place series is going to have Daphne Zuniga, and oh. uh, what's her name uh, uh, is coming back as Amanda uh, um, Heather Locklear. <sighs> Oh man, that's just well good for her. Yeah. I, I mean, she's had yep. some she's had some troubling years the past five years. So good for her, right? So so they're all coming back. Well, I mean, they're coming back, and there's a couple more that are coming back. But they're saying that the plan is is that as the show goes on, uh, that they're, that they plan on bringing back even more originals. Yeah. So, well, it says here, hear. it says here, Heather Locklear, Laura Lighton, and Daphne Zuniga are all, all signed to come back. Yep. For it. So. Isn't that kind of funny, though? Because, like, it's an apartment complex that these people supposedly lived in in the early 90s, and these people are all still somehow connected 30 years later? Okay. I, I guess. But, you know, whatever. It's, it's yeah, a whatever. TV show, I know, but it's, it's just a funny premise. You know what I mean? Because, like, like for if you've ever lived in an apartment complex, do you know everybody still from that apartment complex that you lived at 30 years ago? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So it should be interesting. I mean, it's a story, and it's and it's it's interesting that they are bringing the show back. I I don't know that there's like a huge demand for that nerd Cosa Nostra. I I am um, yeah. I'm I'm when you mentioned it when I saw it on the the the, the tag for the show today. I was like, really? That's coming back? I mean, they're I mean, 
I, I mean, with all the daytime soap operas that are out there that people refuse to stop watching, they're going to bring this back. But obviously, some some executive got convinced to spend money on it, at least for a pilot anyways. So. Right. Now, something that I understand fully why they're bringing uh, to live action and why they want to do this, and that, of course, is an R-rated yeah. Ninja Turtles produced by yeah. Walter Live yeah. action Hell yeah. Ronin movie. Tell me that that is not some inspired like thing right I'll, there, man. I'll, I'll, just say, I'll just say this straight up. Paramount had an incredible CinemaCon panel. Yeah. They, they they really they, they came out of nowhere uh, with with a lot of stuff. I mean, and this now, is look, one of those big ones. Like for me, it, this it is, is a, yeah. <laughs> But I'm also uh, holding judgment. Okay, let's let's be honest here, people. Let's all take a step back. This is Paramount we're talking about. These are the people that have done what they have done with GI Joe, done what they have done with Transformers. They do have already right. done what they Halo. have done with Michael Bay's. Well, hold on, they thought the Michael Bay Ninja movie Turtles. was amazing, and they hold on, though. they got a writer. Uh, and the writer's pretty promising. I think it's the writer of the Chucky TV series. That's not promising at oh, all. God. Uh, <laughs> that is not promising. At well, all. A, lot people, a lot of people like the Chucky TV series. That doesn't so mean it's good. No, if Steph was writing it, other if, if, Steph, if, Steph, if, Steph, if Steph was writing it, then yes, I would be excited. My bad. Uh, okay, so, he's, so the I'm writer sorry. of this is the... Okay, my bad. Uh, he's the one who wrote the, not the TV series, my mistake, I'm sorry. He, uh, The writer is Tyler Burton Smith, who wrote Boy Kills World, which is coming out soon. He also yeah, wrote by Bill Gosgo, yeah, he, that's that one. He, he wrote the 2019 Child's Play reboot. Yeah. 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 That movie was, uh... Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, and I'm also holding out, too, I think what will also tell me a little bit more is who's directing. Okay, if we're getting a Michael Depp Bay type person... Oh I'm no! I can t- I can tell you right now it's going to kind of freak it. I can Ooh. tell you right now it's going to direct it. Uh, if you've read the last Ronin, if you own the graphic novel, there's a director who gives the foreword to the book, and that is uh, Robert Rodriguez. I think he's directing this movie. I can I, see I, that. Like, yeah, I can see that. that. Uh, direct it. And I love when, Robert Rodriguez. I mean, even, he hasn't directed as anything director. like in over a decade, but I'll give him a chance. If he oh, no, no, no. It. He directed Alita. He, yeah, he Rodriguez oh, directed yeah, Alita, yeah, and, he, and he directed yeah. uh, Book of Boba Fett. He directed... Which I don't blame I don't blame Robert for Book of Boba Fett. I don't. No, I, that movie that movie was effed up. That, that was effed up because Disney just wanted to turn that into a TV show. Yeah. That was the most. I, but, just, but, all I, I'm, I just hope that they stick with the source material here that they actually do. I mean, if you, again, I mean, if you, if uh, you this is scary. Ronin, yeah, if you read Last Ronin, it can easily, that story can easily fit a two hour movie. Like, it really could. Like, you can hit all the beats in, in a two hour movie pretty well, I feel like. Um, it, I mean, it's a great story. It's one of the most. It's one of the most popular and like most beloved comics of like the modern era of the last few years. They're making a video game based off of it, uh, too. Right. Announced the thing last year. This is uh, my problem. It's like a huge turtles it's fan like i um i i am curious though they have two paths in front of them they can either go with cgi live action or they could go with the costumes of like, course, no, like CGI. god no god RJ. no if they did costumes, it would be... No, they, they, they have to do practical. They have to do practical. Yeah, they do They're not going to do practical suits. They're not going to do practical. They probably they, they will not do practical suits. I mean, if you want to go... if You, have, if you, you know wanna... what they're probably going based off of? Of that, that leak or that um, that YouTube video of the last Ronin, you know, that was that was put together. Of, I, I forgot if it was a, a leak yeah, of I... test footage or what it was supposed to be, but, you know, it was like super realistic live action... Um, if you huh. want to take this to the next level, you have the last Ronin to the original 1990s movie take place in that continuity, and you have Judith Ho come back as an older age. Now, if you want to go next level, that's what you do. Will they do that? Probably not. Should they though? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, what in the tur- um, I mean, the three turtles are dead. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's... there's only one alive. I don't know how the audience is going to respond because the audience I'm... love all of them. It takes place in like 
in the future, yeah, right Yeah, in the future, the old dead, blah blah. Um, the if, if you, I forgot the clan or something like that, I forgot the clan. Like the older live action movies, you know, the original '90s movies that could actually work. I I would love for Alan Richardson to play. I think um, the character. I think honestly, that's the only way to work for me because, like, I I want a turtle universe before doing these one off turtle mm-hmm. films. Uh, like the last Ronin, like he's like that's the most popular turtle storyline apparently because that's what everyone's doing now. They're making a game, doing this, and they're doing a bunch of other shit with the last Ronin. Uh, give me some more turtle films with the actual turtles before having them all murdered in one and giving. I, agree. Uh, that's the last well, Ronin. I don't know. I, I don't really they, care about this. I agree. To be I agree with Bradley, like, like, like how is, will the how will the audience react to it? Because they're all going to be the all three is going to be dead and one is going to be alive. Well, yeah, but but again, remember, like, there's already a, 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 a conjunction with, like, they've already got a parallel film franchise going on with the animated stuff. Z- well, yeah, because Steph is, is, is a great producer who make amazing products, The Boys, Invincible, um, the but, new Ninja but, Turtle movie. But, like, so film franchise where you have all four turtles, and that's geared towards everyone and family. And the last movie was amazing, though. It's, it, you have your cartoon franchise here. It makes sense to go with the live action stuff. Okay, we've already done the four turtles. We've already done traditional TMNT movies. Let's do something radically different. Let's go R rated. Let's do live action. Let's do something that's meant to be some an alternative to what we're doing with the uh, mutant mayhem franchise. You know, I mean, also, the, also that's good in the TV show on Paramount. Come I out. like what they're doing. With this. Um. I know some people are going to be like, oh, my God, it's Walter Hamada producing. Oh, my God. Listen, listen. I, I could give the guy pride. He's great at producing horror producer. movies. He knows how to produce R-rated horror stuff. I think it's fine. I'm not freaking out. That's Walter Hamada behind this. It's it's cool with me. I, yeah, he's good at producing horror movies. But live action, when it comes to superhero franchise and characters and comic book characters, he's terrible at it. Like, he's dog crap. Perp, that argument has is not even relatively close to the same thing. How did the audience react to all? This has nothing. To do with the... Perp, how about read the comic book of the last Ronin and go buy it in a comic book shop? You had an entire comic universe book. of films to be Logan with. Like, I I don't understand. like. Do we have an entire universe? Well, how many X Men movies? No, ten I, I and twelve. Why, like, why come on. Live action movie to set up the last Ronin. The last Ronin's a standalone story. You don't need a movie with like. Well, no, I'm not saying they, they don't need to set it up, but it'd be nice to have like an actual established live action turtle universe. Is all I'm saying. Before but doing it, all, like unless the, unless the movie is gonna open up on a flashback before the um be uh, setting up. You, you know. My idea would work perfectly. You make this a sequel to the 1990 film. I'm just saying. If, 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 I mean, Walter, Walter like, is not smart. He's, that's he's kind of not dumb terrible. He, well, that's, Walter is not smart like that. Come on. He's not smart like that. He wouldn't do that. I, if, if they did that, like, connected to the 1990 movie, which would be excellent, I would be up for that. Not not the 2016 movies. Don't do yeah. that, please. And, and again, if you, read the, if you read the comic, that story has naturally interwoven flashbacks to yeah, the Turtles' matter. life before everything went to hell. So, I mean, mm-hmm. like... I think it'll be fine. I'm excited for this. It's probably a few years away, but I, I'm down for this completely. Well, I think what kind of shocked what kind of shocked me though, because I'm looking through the Paramount announcements on CinemaCon. That's an angle I don't ever want to see again. Um, <laughs> no, but I looked through the uh, I looked through the announcements, and one of them that surprised me was they're doing a remake of The Running Man. Yeah, yeah. Ed, you're right. Yeah, Ed, you're oh, right. Yeah, the, the, the right. one that, directing it. Yeah, the one that Arnold did was not remotely close to the thing. So, yeah, I, I could see why they're doing it. Which I'm not upset. I like Edgar Wright. He's a great director. I mean, hey, a new Grand musical, Powell? a new musical yeah. from Trey Parker and Matt Stone with music from Kendrick Lamar. From the, I can't wait South, for that one. Yeah, yeah they, the South Park they, yeah, well, they, yeah. they announced a bunch of. That's, I mean, uh, a Ridley Scott did, directed BG's biopic. Yeah, that, that was announced like two months, a month ago. Ridley Scott yeah, on and out, but I will say they did show Gladiator Two footage, and God, I wish I had been there because that's yeah, that's one of my. It's, it's, a, it's a twenty years later. Twenty years later with um. One of my most anticipated movies of this year. I that I movie, that movie better be worth three hundred million dollars they spent on it. Dude, 
the footage they described said there are rhinos in the arena. Of course. Sharks. Okay, yeah. Um and man eating monkeys. Yeah, they were saying that gladiator too. Like, they said stupid. it looked epic. No, I mean this is Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. What? Gladiator 2 has what now? Rhinos <laughs> in the arena. Uh, there, uh, there was a sequence showcase where they were in the ocean with sharks um, and man-eating monkeys. Kill me now, please. Thank are, you. They, oh, are they CGI oh, monkeys or are they YouTube. real monkeys? Thank that you, Brad. They oh, stop Thank it. You, Brad. Dear please, God what is this madness? I mean, that's are, really are we seriously going to ruin the first Gladiator movie? With They're that, not going to. I'm, not. I'm not saying that yet, dude. Look at the cast: Pedro Pascal, Denzel Washington. All of these guys are being. These are very picky pe- people with their roles. The fact that they're doing this movie, I think, except Pedro. Uh, but Paul Mescal, with Denzel Washington, uh, a lot of the other cast. Denzel yeah. Washington, mm-hmm. Joseph Quinn, Joseph Quinn. Just I swear, Joseph Quinn is the only I star am... in Stranger Things that got every role possible in Hollywood. And look, they're not. You know, it's not like Maximus is. You know, it's it's. Uh, look, there's some stuff to do. There's some there's some stuff to do there. No. I mean, it's it's a, it, yeah. it sounds like it's going to be a blast. I'm looking. I can't. Yeah, I can't wait. What is coming on November? Yeah, I don't want to hear anybody talk uh, November, shit about yeah, Scott anymore. I don't want to hear anybody that talk anything said, bad about Ridley Scott. Said, that being said, can I just say like about I mean, this <laughs> turtles thing? I, 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 I haven't read or I, I don't really know the story of the Ronin story. Like I, gotta I read that. Oh, good. Um, so- but I will say this. I mean, I, I have said as far as like what it, what it is. I hope that. I hope that they do practical effects. I would love, love, love if they uh, use people in suits. I am so sick of CGI when it comes to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that I never want to see another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Michael Bay. If it's got to be CGI. If we got to have CGI Turtles, then leave it at home because I do not want to see it. I don't care about it anymore. And there's I'm I'm so sick of seeing digital characters all the time like that don't have to be digital characters. The best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie to this day is that first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie in 1990. You will never tell me any different. You will never convince me of anything else because it's just the fact. That movie was written beautifully. It was shot beautifully. It's funny when it needs to be funny. It's serious when it needs to be serious. It's it's a great telling of the turtle story. And I'm sorry, but though it, it's also the last thing that Jim Henson was a part of. And those turtle outfits are amazing. Now, they ruined them in subsequent movies and whatnot. But that first movie is is on point. So, I say... All that to say, I'm definitely down for seeing a um, uh, an R-rated, serious, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Uh, and actually, you know, I, I wasn't so. I, what was it, RJ? Did you were you the one talking about getting Judith Hogue back? Yeah, my idea would be if if you want to go this route you could have it be a sequel to the original 1990 movie because it's set in in the distant future where there's one surviving turtle after a series of events and you have that turtle you have an older april o'neill and her daughter um so i'm like to me you could bring to this hope back if you want to make it a sequel to the 1990s movie it could work if they do that i'm all in me too me too. Judith Hogue is amazing. Is amazing. I, that woman is a treasure. I'm telling you right now. It's just an absolute treasure. If you, the, question you is, though, the question is, though, is, is can you get her back? Because, you know, the, the weird part about that is, is that in talking with Judith, I found I ended up finding out that she was one of the big ones who had a lot of complaints about, like, the weapons and stuff like that. And I and I remember talking to her about it. And I was like, "But they're ninjas, Judith." Like, and she was fine with it. But like, there was I don't know. It was weird. Like, like I think she'd be down for it. I think if if she knew what she was getting in, in, involved with and what what it, what the story was, I think she'd be down for it. It'd be some. I mean, the I odds what, of that though, man, happening. Really, I don't think really not about the violence though. 
she's really not about the violence. Like I was really surprised. Like she was one of the ones, one of the reasons why she wasn't in part two was because she was so vocal about the violence in part one that they just let her go. Which is funny because part two toned down the violence. <laughs> right. To- yeah. Well, that's why they never used any of their weapons in part two. It's because yeah, everyone right. was complaining that in part one, when they were using them, this all oh, this is too violent since this is really geared towards kids. That's why in part two, you see like Michelangelo swinging like sausages yeah. around, right? Yeah. That's why they did it. That's uh, kind of what ruined that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I just kind of going through some of the Disney stuff. It's kind of funny. Is they have a, I guess they aired a Deadpool and Wolverine no phones PSA. So apparently, uh, well, apparently Hugh Jackman as Wolverine looks at the camera and goes, hey, hey, bub, turn off your bleeping phone. <laughs> and Deadpool's there and cracks a joke. I'm like, it just sounds funny. And I'm like, all right, I, I'm just excited for everything. They also mentioned Secret Wars. Yes, <laughs> I just read that. Yeah, they're showing a lot of footage right now. Not really. Yeah, they've showed 15 minutes of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. They're showing 35 minutes of Inside Out. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be mad if they show me 35 minutes of a movie. Yeah, they're showing... They, they're, Disney, they, Disney they, typically does that. I'll be mad, that. though, but... Yeah, and, uh, they, but they, they did, other studio did show trailers Param- that we will never Paramount get Paramount typically see. does it, too. When I went... 13 uh, minutes of uh, Planet of the Apes. Yep, I went, I went to Paramount's presentation years and years ago, back in 2014. They showed, like, 25 minutes of Age of Extinction and... Oh, my met, God. You know, 20 minutes of Interstellar and all this other stuff, and... I will not feel those nipples, Joe. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I hope you oh, <laughs> Good Lord. Well, I was, I was excited by Paramount with the TMNT stuff, obviously. But there was another thing I wanted to mention, too, besides the other big obvious one. Transformers okay. 1. Well, that one, too. I'm excited for that. But no, I'm referring to the Avatar oh. The Last Airbender 2D animated. Oh, yes. they're making yeah. it. And they announced today... That the first one is releasing in 2025. It's going to be a sequel to the original animated series called Aang the Last Airbender. That's yep. dope. It's going to be the, the cast of characters older in like their 20s and 30s. And the villain of that movie is going to be played by Dave Batista. And that's I was dope. like, yes, yes, sign me up. I am the, so the only person that's that. coming back from the cast is the guy who plays Zuko. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Dante Bosco is returning as Zuko. Which makes sense someone. because his character in the show he's, sounds like he, he's like 30 years old. Yeah, he's already sounds yeah. He's yeah, like, <clears throat> he's already sounds old compared but to I'm, the, I am yeah. so down for that 2D animation, a brand new animation studio, you know. If I'm, it makes money, hopefully you push Disney to make 2D animation movies again, please. Yeah. And did anyone see the descriptions of the Sonic 3 footage they showed today? Yeah, that Sonic 3 thousand. footage was shown. Oh my god, I want to see. I, Knuckles I released the trailer, man. Knuckles and Sonic see. fight. Uh, fight Shadow. They confirm well, the return know, of Jim Carrey as as uh, Jim Carrey Sonic comes back. Sonic Shadow in New York City, and they're fighting in the air as Shadow uses his motorbike from the video yeah. games. I'm just wait. Like, did they <laughs> confirm? Did they confirm? Oh, I haven't confirmed who's voicing Shadow. My. They're probably gonna announce it this summer. Oh yeah, they have not I confirmed who's voicing. Are they gonna announce? Oh my god, it'll be amazing if it's Hayden, bro. I would Please. lose my mind if that was actually if it's that. Hayden, but that would be the perfect well, they, he's in perfect. the credits in the footage they showed today. Like, uh, they showed a, a footage, like a reel, and he's in the credits. Uh, I'm for thinking, the film. is that movie coming out next year? No, it comes no, out December, pretty- December this year with um, the new, um, South, the new whatever Lion King prequel movie, and no, uh, that'd be kind of yeah, yeah, interesting yeah, if, they no. the, if, they, if they put the physical out next year. That'll be a fun year for Hayden Christensen because next year is 20 years of Revenge of the Sith. They're going to re-release that in May 4th, I guess. Oh, I hope so. I, I'm, I was, I'm, I, every time there's a re-release of a Star Wars movie, I see it. I like seeing it. I really, I like it. Sucks I didn't but, get Phantom Menace close to me, though, which, which yeah. sucked. It was like three hours away. But I was I was going to... I'm Next week, I'm going to... Well, yeah, they're going to... Spider-Man 1 and 2. I'm probably going to see Spider-Man 2. Because I like no, that. I want to go see Spider Man movies, right? Yeah, I want to go see yeah the Sam Raimi ones. They're going to show for like three days. Yeah. And then that's it. And then, and then after that will be The Amazing Spider Man. And then after that will be the Tom Holland ones. I'm most like, if I see, I'll see The Amazing Spider Man one. And then Homecoming. And, and then um, No Way Home. 
Also, uh, other quick little headline uh, that just got posted. The Joker 2 trailer is the biggest Warner Brothers trailer since oh, Barbie. Yeah. I'm sorry, bro, but like every time they say this about this biggest trailer of all time, it doesn't come to... Barbie. Well, they didn't say it was the biggest trailer of all time. They so said it's the biggest tra- Warner Brothers trailer since Barbie. At yeah, but Barbie made $1.5 they million. Also, dollars and they also gonna, roll Joker's in, not going to make that. Did they also roll in non-YouTube views? Yeah, well, that's what I was. That's it, yeah. They, they combine. The they combine thing. in every social media thing. That's what they do with every. Movie well, yeah. I, yeah. Like I said, I was gonna finish. They they said it's the biggest trailer launch for a Warner Brothers film since Barbie at 167 million views across all social media platforms. Mm-hmm. This, I like, agree. I, I, don't, I don't think. I, I don't think. I'll be it's all right. If, because I mean, okay, like, I mean, the, because I mean, in, in, uh, in October, high, so. in October, Venom Three is coming out the same month. So that's going to take a box office hit against Joker. Oh, no, no, no. I think Joker is going to stomp. No, no, but no. Joker is going to make more than Venom 3. I, so, I, but, I so that, but it's going to take a little that. bit of a hit of the box office for Joker. I, I disagree. I think Venom is the one that should be afraid. Sony's not going to move. They cannot afford that to move. I, I don't if think they will, move. but I think but I think if, if, if they could Venom move it to November, hit, but it's going to be Venom. They could move That'd it to November, idea, but that also Jim. will go against the new uh, um, Ridley Scott movie. So The fact is, people yeah. are going to see this movie, whether they want to see it, and if they hate it. It's that type of movie. They're going to go see this movie because they want to know. I mean, there's the curiosity factor. From exactly. Fight, exactly. So yeah. That alone has already gotten this movie you know, way more... It's got it way more ahead and stuff like that. Like, yes. like I said, Sam Sony Mendel, won't move. That's it. Yeah, Sony won't move, but it. Uh, I think Venom is the one that could. This might be the first, and I, God, I hope it is the first Venom movie that doesn't make money. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> but, oh, Venom movies will always make money, but That's they'll probably make happen. Money. That's what I mean, like six five hundred. So yeah. Although, who knows? Because Madam, I thought the same thing with Madam Web because you know all their all the Sony films make money for God knows why. Yeah. And, um, and Madam Web took a hit. Made no money. I mean, so far, dude, um, Sony has been flopping at the box office. They have not been a great year. New Ghostbusters movie flop. I wonder why, because he didn't bring back the original director. You, you know, and and Madam Web that movie's no. Bombed. I think Ghostbusters didn't didn't do well. A, a bomb. A, a bomb. A bomb. No, you need three hundred. You need three fifty yeah. to break even for that movie. They didn't break yeah. even. Look, you can see it. Lewis, Lewis reports like on the movie every every day. Like, yeah, it's not gonna break even. He made his budget back like within three weeks, I think, of the box office run. Yeah, like that. Adam Webb lost a ton of money for the studio. Same is gonna go with Ghostbusters. And I guarantee you, Craven will definitely be next. So, anytime. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised Tony Tony didn't show up. Like, yeah, we could show you a snippet of Craven coming out in August. What? Yeah, because when was Sony's? Because, was they, yesterday, are, because right? they already showed a trailer last year, and then they yeah, because like the, yeah, and why then they ended up no 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 Sony Sony did not attend CinemaCon this year. They I, that. I know I said oh, Sony bro, showed, get off, I'm sorry, Sony bro, but get off their... the get off the crack, bro. That movie flopped. Well, that movie Sony had a budget has Sony over hundred million dollars, and, and and it needed three fifty to break even. I mean two fifty. So yeah, then they're not. The bu- the budget was not eighty, buddy. It-, it got reported by Hollywood Reporter that's a hundred million dollars. Okay, Sony's Madam Web is one of the biggest flops in comic book movies. Madam Web, absolutely. The Dakota Johnson led Temple has only grossed forty million in the domestic, and its worldwide gross remains under one hundred million dollars. Yeah, bro. Like the literally, the report, the report, the report that, but Hollywood film. Report literally said the budget was hundred million. It was a massive failure. I just looked it up. <laughs> yeah, bro. It was yeah. literally a hundred million. <laughs> at, fir- at first, at first, told you it was eighty. It but was it's huge. Okay, it was one of the biggest flops in the history of movies. It was the worst. And, and I don't who's excited give, for The Apprentice? Give, like, it's not. Who's it's excited not, for The Apprentice? Not, just me. It was not the quota flop. When you're talking about flops. What? Well, of course, his audio went out. The Democrats are your, trying your to get audio, after you. Your audio trying to get out. after Enosh. That's the problem. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna go argue back and forth with Joe and Perfect. Enosh, your your audio it's, went it's out. It's a loose loose conversation, bro. 
It's a lose lose conversation. Enosh, I see your mouth moving, but no words are coming out. Okay. <clears throat> okay, little movie prep. It didn't even make its budget back. Okay, and okay. even if it did, it, it, it there was money spent on there was money spent on marketing. There was money spent on other. On well, other they barely spent shit on that. So yeah, it's it's it was a flop. It did not profit barely. Yeah, I, 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 like going back and forth with Joe and Perv. I'm not. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't dude, like dude, a huge. It's not flop. eighty million, buddy, bro. Hollywood Reporter flop. says a hundred million. Like, god damn. So Hollywood Reporter is gonna lie and be like, yeah, the budget was. Oh, it was eighty. No, bro. They literally report on it when Adam went first flop, and and like, come on, bro, like. Chill. I'm, let's not argue. Per, I get it, Perp. You love that movie. Good luck to you. Power to you, bro. Why are you, you. Di- Why are you trying to die on the hill that Madam Web wasn't a flop? That's a weird hill to die on. It was a flop. <laughs> there is no, no, no. There is. There are facts, and there are there are things that are. Sorry, little movie prep. I'm not. And you to... and literally Sony came out and bashed the Kodak Jones for no reason. The yeah, actual yeah, fact yeah, of the was, movie. Yeah. Uh, Madam Webb was a when you have, when you have the cast of your RJ, right? Like you saw Sony bash uh, out of Dakota Johnson for no reason whatsoever. Well, no, like, I, was, hey, I, was, I, I would say probably any movie that doesn't make its production back or like the money, like any money, yeah, that's a flop. <laughs> yeah, not like, to mention marketing. So you have to double the budget. So if it was 80 million, you're talking 160 million trailers, TV spots, uh, cups, theater merchandise. All those types of things, interviews, spots, blah blah blah. Uh, it's not just one trailer and one TV spot. Not to mention horrible, horrendous critical and audience reception. Not even to the point of Morbius, where people were making fun of it. Where well, Sony well, put it I back was, in theaters before you have your entire because it was cast. because people were were so and, and, and I'm sure like were, Dakota, it was such a joke. Was okay? This was just trash. Yeah, well, and I like the, the there was no point of Sony publicly. It's not yeah, and, like bashing Dakota. What did she do to you? She's the one, like, why are you bashing her? She's the reason why the movie flopped. No, buddy. You should look in yourself. And you're the one who, what, the movie went in production and changed a lot during production. Like, even Dakota confirmed it. Like, come on, bro. Like, that's like, bashing your star publicly just, like, just to blacklist them from Hollywood? That's not the right thing, bro. Hey, little movie perp. I don't think anybody's saying that it was a flop because of those things. It was a flop because it didn't make any money. We're not talking about how bad. Oh, here we go with Joe. With Koda was unprofessional. That's a whole other yeah, discussion. Right, bro. And so, so <laughs> Cindy was unprofessional when she was on on um Saturday night and bashed the movie. Come on, the movie, bro. the 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 movie. Look, the, the the whole thing was unprofessional because the movie wasn't good. I I've tried mm. to watch the movie and the movie is horrible. Uh, <laughs> and you know, Kevin Feige, real quick, breaking news has just arrived at CinemaCon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Breaking news! Do absolutely nothing. There will be what? no surprises from Marvel. I guarantee it. No surprises. Uh, yep. <laughs> okay, that's okay, <laughs> Feige. That's a crazy statement. We make movies for theaters and we make them events mail where they belong. Yes, buddy. But some co- we need that? to question your. Okay. Yeah. You know Meltzer, where did you where did you see that? I'd like to follow. Oh, by um, disgusting film. That's what Feige. Disgusting said. film, okay. Yeah, I don't know about the last couple. I don't know about the last couple Marvel film, Kevin Feige for sure. I give you, I give you sure. I get, I get it. You have to prom- you there to promote your movies to for the movie theaters to promote it. I get that. You have to say that. Sure. To be fair, Crazy Joe, what do you expect of Dakota Johnson? She did the three Fifty Shades of Grey films, so. She's not yeah. very. Uh, she, her, bro, she lived, bro, mind you, she, family... mind you, she did them for with with a with a guy who was my choice for one of my choices for Batman. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, he would be great, Jamie Dornan. Yeah, he, he would especially be when you see him in the first movie when he, you see him in the first movie when he's completely clean shaven. I went, holy crap! How the hell was this guy not Batman? Or at least like considered, you know. Yeah, he'd be good. He he he'd be good as Batman. I agree. I agree, hundred percent. I mean, whoever they cast as Batman, hey, good luck to that guy. <laughs> every yes. Batman cast get backlash. You know? There's all every every Batman, time they are from the Batman fandoms. I feel bad. Like, oh my god! Do you know his phone having a seizure? I think, yeah, I think, I think Enos it's... having no audio. I think Enos' audio just completely took out. Yeah, my audio is messing up. So I'm I'm probably gonna go on to the next uh uh. 
topic here just so I could talk about it. And then if you guys yeah. want to continue, yeah. continue, but my, my audio is literally like, I can't hear anybody. So it's not doing me any good to be here. So, um, so I, so I want to get the story in, uh, we already talked about it, but, but yeah, Matt, Madam Webb was a flop. I'm sorry. Okay. Madam Webb was a flop. <laughs> we, we put all that stress. Madam Webb was a flop. I, yeah. I, I, it, it, probably if, you, if somebody likes like it, you if like somebody it, yeah. likes it, they like it. Look, if somebody likes it, they like it. That's fine. But it didn't make any money. And so it, mm, bro. it you know, that's what it is. I wish, I wish, I wish you nothing for the best. Whoever liked those movies. I don't, no problem. I mean, if, if any movie was a flop, though, that that movie definitely was. Perp, it didn't we're make not any gonna argue. Listen, perp, it's dumb, bro. We're not gonna argue. And okay. Well, arguing. anyway, anyway, it's not really that big of a deal. But anyways, my my last story that I had uh, something on, and that is, it's official. They're making a Transformers versus GI Joe movie, <laughs> and yep. it's going to be connected to the Snake Eyes movie with Henry. Oh Cole. my God, Lord God have mercy! You know that you know it's a possibility, right? Oh, it's, it's probably it's probably it's probably not just a possibility. It's probably, I mean, if Henry Golden is still connected, and he's the one who was talking about it a few weeks ago for a couple of weeks ago for us to even do a an episode about. So if he was talking about that a couple of weeks ago, they got all these grand designs and plans. Then he's probably still involved, which is the dumbest thing ever. Then because that means yeah, that I, I, listen, I like Henry Goldman. He's a good actor. That movie did not give him any favor. It did not like he's good. And I'm sorry. Do not bring back the guy who directed that movie. I like the Thank guy who did it. Yeah. yeah. If but like you have to the movie has to be at least two hours and thirty minutes. It can be two hour uh, under two hours. He could not make that. I'm sorry. I, I don't I don't care about how long a movie is. I just want it to be good. We have yet to to have a really good G.I. Joe movie. Like that is universally like, yeah, that was a good G.I. Joe movie. G.I. Joe uh, um, oh. Retaliation was pretty good. Um, it was. Um, yeah, it was yeah. the closest. It was the closest that we've gotten to actually having a, uh, you know. Which uh, one was the rock in? A good G.I. Joe movie. But, uh, yeah. you know, but uh, yeah, I know. I know, Crazy Joe. You, you just you love her. Something fierce. I know you do. But here's the thing. I'm I'm I, I want somebody who can actually write a good movie. And I have not seen anything so far <laughs> from Transformers or G.I. Joe that shows me that anybody that they've gotten to work on them so far um, is trying to write something that is good. It, it literally Transformers Ooh. movies just take up space. They're they're literally just yeah, eye too much space there. Yeah. They're just eyegasms. That's all they are. They're just, they're, I'm sorry, but the stories that have been told in these Transformer movies, how can you even call them a story? And Bumblebee, uh -huh. Bum, I'm sorry. Yeah, Bumblebee. The opening scene cool, was amazing, though. For, for as cool as Bumblebee was, you know what? Here's the thing. Bumblebee crashed and burned towards the end. It was boring. I it got really I, boring. For as heartfelt as it was, they, they packed a lot into the beginning with with the with the car and the kids and stuff, and then then obviously showing the Gen One Transformers on Cybertron and all that. That was great. But by the by the time that movie started getting towards the end, it it fizzles. It just dies. I mean, it also doesn't and, help you have a character who is invisible for the majority of the film or for the entirety of the film. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I enjoyed Bumblebee thoroughly. I, I enjoyed the. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it. I'm just saying it wasn't great, though. It, it was at the at the time of release. It was the best Transformers movie. Okay, yeah, but that's not saying anything, though, RJ. I know it's not saying much, but it still was a good movie compared to the trash fire we were getting. <sighs> yeah, but see that I can't I can't compare movies like that though. I mean, I know we were going to, and if we were all just sitting around, we would. But like, but like, given the fact that we're talking about it, trying to talk about it objectively, like, to me, it's like it, it's not satisfying to say, well, it was better than the other Transformers movies because the other Transformers so weird movies weren't great. So I don't know. I, I will be curious to see how they handle this G.I. Joe crossover. If it's going to be like a brand new team of shows that will be introduced to. Um, because that, that's a lot. You have to introduce an entire roster of new shows in their first movie. And it's going to be in a Transformers crossover. 
I, I feel like they should try and make another G.I. Joe movie first and have that be the lead-in for this, but I don't think they're doing that because I feel like G.I. Joe as a property has been through the mud so much, they need to do a crossover first, they feel like, to get them off the ground again, yeah. which I don't think is yeah. necessary, but that's probably the route they're taking. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I, the, the notion of a crossover is exciting. I just hope they handle it well. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm all about the idea of crossing over G.I. Joe with, with Transformers. I mean, from the very first time I saw my very first G.I. Joe uh, Transformers comic book, I was down, man. I was all about it. I, I collected that four issue miniseries back in like 1986, I think it was. You still have it? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, I'm, I'm going to buy a couple of them. I got to go to those comic books and see if they have them. And I tell you what, man, I, I love that. So, yeah, so I'm not against the idea of. of I'm of not. Either, I, yeah. just, I just want them to take it seriously and I just want them to do a good job of it. And I, and. Again, I'm a little concerned if you're introducing G.I. Joe in a Transformers movie. What's the focus? And, like, what's that story? I don't know. I don't know. Especially, Giant light especially, beam especially in the sky. If, they, if they leave it connected to, to Henry Golding's snake eyes, I... Uh, <laughs> Enosh, are... you and I will do a stream if it is connected to snake eyes, and I will talk you down. Thank you. Because for those, un- for those unfamiliar, when Enosh, was, when Enosh was talking one uh, in his review about Snake Eyes, I don't mind revealing this, when he was talking about the friend that explained the plot of the movie before he went to see the movie, that was me. So I, so, and I can tell you that the expression and the feeling that he had talking about going into the movie was 100% genuine. Yep. Yeah. Do I know what whatever they do with this movie, they're going to have some Transformers uh, artifact that the humans and Transformers have to get, and the G.I. Joes and Transformers will team up to get this artifact. I did like, that's what, um, that's what I, yeah, I did like the Anthony Ramos character last the last movie. The one. And, and movie King was Arthur. Different. It was not bad. It'll be King Arthur's sword or something. Oh my god. I will not, <laughs> oh my. Jesus. Wow, you just give them an idea. I mean, they're probably watching you right now to put in the movie. Probably. Probably, probably. I, yeah, I'm sorry. They, they, they totally screwed me, screwed up with uh, the whole Knights of the Round Table thing in Transformers. I mean, what? Seriously, we're bringing King Arthur into Transformers now. Like, well, the Transformers oh, created man. human history. You know, yeah, they were there since the Ice Age. Yep. Of course. <laughs> Why not? Right. Makes sense. Sure. No, I killed know, the Nazis so... for us. <laughs> right. How nice of them. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. It's 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 a weird thing. It's, it is a weird thing. I would think that they would want to make a successful GI Joe franchise before just trying to do it. But but again, I I think it's they they consider their Transformers franchise successful because it makes money, and it doesn't matter the quality of the actual movies. It it makes money, so. They're using it to spin off, you know? Yeah. Makes sense. Oh, dude, there's been... I know, Joe, that they've said that, but they've also made statements that that everything is what it is, that everything that happened, happened. I've heard those comments, too, and those statements, too. So they, they go back and forth with what's actually been rebooted in Bumblebee and what happened. They go back and forth. Like, the, even the last one, like, the producer in the movie couldn't even to give you an answer. Right, couldn't even opinion, give you an answer. He's like, ah. In my opinion, I like Bumblebee, yeah. um, and I didn't think Rise of the Beast was as bad as the last night. It wasn't as good. No, um, as it, it, any was of okay. yeah, it was okay. Film. But in my opinion, those two films, by trying to retcon and do things like that, you're just making it more convoluted and more stupid. Just reboot, please. I don't care if you use the same designs of these characters. Just make it a whole, un- you, uh, whole new universe at this point. Stop trying to attach it to Michael Bay, please. Ugh. Please. It's because Michael Bay has to get his $20 million every time they make a new movie. That's why. Yeah. But hey, hey, good luck. Hey, hey well, those... it's been a long time. We, <laughs> we haven't seen Michael Bay director since the movie he released in 2021. But, you know, well, really the don't... continuity doesn't make any sense with these movies, man. Exactly. Those movies yeah. don't make money, though, because, oh my god, they're in the Michael Bay universe. That I want to see what happens the, the, next in the yeah. Michael Bay universe. That's not why they're, they make money. 
I will compare the the Transformer universe to the MonsterVerse. They just make money, oh, and that's okay. it. Don't get me started on MonsterVerse. That's it. That's it. That's, it. that's, that, that's a good comparison to compare to the mon- they make good people turn off their minds. They enjoy a big kaiju Transformer fighting against and, and stuff, and teaming up with humans, and they make a ton of money. Like the new one is gonna like the new MonsterVerse movie is gonna end up making six hundred million dollars, which is good for Warner Brothers and Legendary. But you know, as right. much as it sucks, it's I enjoyed it. I don't care what you say, it. Yeah. It, it was awesome. Don't care what you got. It was not awesome. <laughs> yes, it was. No, it was not. <laughs> yes, it was. No, it was a lot of fun. I refuse to to say that. I refuse. What was <laughs> awesome? Godzilla X Cog. I thought that was oh. a, it was a. Well, I was okay. It's fun. It's a fun movie. It's dumb fun. That's what I expected. Everyone's like, oh, Godzilla minus one. Godzilla minus one, man. No, I want Godzilla X Kong. I want monsters fighting in a city. That's what I got. <laughs> what I, want, I want that too, though. But uh, I also have to, to put in mind that the 90 to 95% of Godzilla films have all of that, but they also have interesting and quirky aspects to their characters and to their plot lines. This had very soulless characters and very soulless plot lines other than monsters. Hmm. Which is, th- there's more fun to be had than just watching two monsters fight. I might as well sit there and enjoy the Fast and Furious films as stupid as they are. <laughs> well, well these, the, the, I mean, the Fast there. and Furious movies, hey, I like them. I just, you know, it's just fun. <laughs> wow. Uh, so here's some breaking news. Apparently right now, uh, nine minutes of Deadpool v- and Wolverine is being shown at, uh, at CinemaCon. Wow. Yeah. And Feige, him, Feige himself also did confirm, just in case it was ambiguous, the film is R-rated. For the Look. fifth th- I'm, Oh, my God. This is the 3,000 times you've been saying that for the last four years. Right. Like, how many times has oh, a right. man got to keep saying that, bro? Oh, that's all right. Like, I mean, literally, he had to walk on stage. Like, bro, and like, he had to he, walk on stage and go, dude, it's fucking yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's ready. Oh, please stop asking me for the fifth time. Apologies for the action. Media. Media. That was. I think like, the media media like, keep I'm, like, I have, like, I'm sick of fighting. Rage! <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I, I just when it, when it comes to uh, that, I, I don't know. Uh, GI Joe and Transformers is going to have to. They, they got a long uphill battle for anything right now and, uh, i mean it's cool they're showing deadpool footage but i mean that's you know we won't, we won't see it because we're gonna see it next month <laughs> like yeah next new trailer next month so yeah i'm i'm looking forward to it i i can't wait to see deadpool i think deadpool is going to be probably the the best thing that comes out this year deadpool looks better than the joker too oh Ooh. for sure that's that to me is not even in the um, city. Okay, wow. so, uh, so can I? I'm, I, oh, no, I'm more excited right. for Deadpool three than Joker. That's an obvious thing, but it. I personally didn't care for the um the Deadpool three trailer. It didn't do that much for me. Yeah, I no, like the Joker trailer, even though I'm not excited for it. I think it's a more. I think so more well put together trailer than Deadpool 3. It felt like they were just putting footage together and stitching it together clunkily and then you're not going to show Wolverine the movie's called Deadpool and Wolverine why are you hiding him? We know he's in the movie what, like what What? So, I don't know uh, Can I also have a word um, no. how, how can you sit there and put out a logo for Transformers One, but not the trailer. And it comes out in freaking September. <laughs> I was, so, I got so mad. I was so excited, and I was like, I was so, I was getting so crazy. And like Transformers One, they're gonna, they're gonna show it, but only at the presentation, not the. That's presentation. exactly what I was talking about with the Deadpool was, Wolverine trailer. I was like, he always in this movie. Why are you hiding I him? Was, I was like. <laughs> Why? I was like, we know the movie's coming out in September. You're only going to show the trailer 
and the, and the presentation, but not the public in five months. Are you kidding me? What? I'm like, I was, I, I wanted to watch this thing. I was like, I'm hearing, I'm hearing all this stuff. Saying, oh my god, it looks so good. The animation is so awesome. I was like, I don't want to hear a description of it. I need to see it visually. Descriptions don't really help for me sometimes. Get, I need to see it physically. Yeah. I, I, mean, I don't like, that's the thing. Like, I wish, I mean, I wish the cinema come was a thing that we could go to. I would love to go one of them. Man, oh, I want to see all the footage these people are seeing. It's dope. See that, my God, like, that is like the only thing. Well, to see the, the Paramount one is the only thing I'm kind of looking for. That, that TMNT R rated one, that's day one for me. R rated TMNT. Oh, yeah. I'm Atlanta. so ready for that. So many oh boy, I, I, that came out. I did not. I did not know they're gonna make it. I didn't know that was gonna be possible. I was like, you know what? They said screw it. <laughs> F them kids. <laughs> Let's make it R-rated. <laughs> like, enough of this cowabunga cow pizza bunga. eating nonsense. We're going back to the Eastman and Lair stuff, bro. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh, it's the yeah, and then the uh, and then the um the GI Joe Transformers thing. Like, I'll I'll watch it, but. If it has anything to do with Snake Eyes, it's kind of give me pause. I was like, yeah, it's dead in the water. If they, yeah. if they connect it, it to that movie, why okay. would they connect it to that movie? That's what I don't understand. We're, we're talking about, we were just talking about flops, movies that flop. Snake Eyes flopped harder than Hard. you can flop. Like $45 million worldwide. Like, what the heck are they thinking? $45 million worldwide. I mean, like, I don't get it. Like, what are you thinking to say, oh, yeah, that was a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. No. Everything about Snake Eyes, the movie, was horrible. There is no redeeming anything in that movie. Nothing. How do you make a movie about Snake Eyes boring? That's my question. <laughs> right. I, yeah. Like, come on, man. It writes itself. It's ninjas. <laughs> it's ninjas, man. <laughs> Bro, like I didn't even. I see love that. that. You're like it's ninjas, man. That sounded like um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, oh, who's the comedian who was in Superman three? Richard uh, Pryor. Uh, Richard, Richard Pryor. Pryor. That sounded like Richard Pryor. <laughs> it's ninjas, man. <laughs> it's ninjas, man. Like, like the thing is, I didn't even see Stink Eyes when it came out. I, I remember that I. I, it was for rent, so I was kind of curious, but I kind of wasted twenty bucks on it. So I was like, "I'm gonna watch a kickass, a kickass uh, GI Joe movie with Snake Eyes. That's gonna be awesome." I'm <laughs> gonna put my twenty bucks back. <laughs> yeah, but not today. <laughs> I'm gonna watch a good Snake Eyes movie, but not today. But this ain't it. <laughs> Yeah, oh it's so bad. It's like you know, at this point, I mean, I was, I mean, when it comes to me, I watch anything like Transformers, but like I, the, the Transformers one, the, the the thing is, that movie, kind of, it's like it's my most anticipated film of the year because it's really you have an anime film of Cybertron. So I've been waiting for that forever for and, the last three years. <laughs> right, right, for the last three years. <laughs> Just you have the 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 people that are, are animating this. It's ILM that did the visual effects for the the live action ones. They're doing the animation, and they say, and I oh my god, I'm here, and I was like, oh my god, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. I need to see it. I need a, a picture or something. <laughs> so like all this gatekeeping from from most of the trailers, it's, it's making me crazy. <laughs> I just want to watch it, like but yeah, I just. Thing. Transformers One will finally be the movie that we're waiting for. Like as far as like what we want to see from Transformers. Actually, oh my! Like I am amazing. done. Elsa, Snake Eyes is a blonde. Is literally a blonde-haired, blue-eyed man who goes to Vietnam and gets messed up. Like he gets injured, and that's why he wears the suit because he's horribly disfigured. And he is mute. He cannot speak anymore. That's the whole point. And I don't know what the heck they did with, with Henry Golding. And everybody was just like, I, you know, look, I get it. There are times when when race swapping doesn't bother me and it's fine. Um, the problem with this was, was when Snake Eyes came out, there was this big push because people for some reason thought that Snake Eyes was Asian. 
He was never Asian. Yeah. Uh, Storm Shadow no. is Asian. And, and Storm Shadow's name is Tommy. And so they got that right. I was surprised that they got that right. But they did. But... <clears throat> Like this, there was this back, there was like this, all this, this outcry over the fact that snake eyes needed to be Asian. And the whole point of the story and and like, uh, uh, me and, um, um, uh, others have talked about it is that like the whole point of the story is that he's the white devil because he joins, uh, the, uh, what's it? The, uh, Asaji or Asiagi, um, a ninja clan and he's a white guy. And so storm shadow hates him at first because of that. Be, like literally hates the guy. They touch on it in the G in the first GI Joe movie, like the live action one, like they touch the on it a little bit and they show him as, as a white kid and they show storm shadow as an Asian kid. And he comes and sees the hard master and the hard master like accepts him and welcomes him in. But like, that's the whole point is that he's a white guy and they totally missed that point. And they, they totally threw that to the side just because they wanted Henry Golding. And I mean, I'm sure they could have made it interesting with a, with an Asian, you know, snake eyes, but they didn't even make it interesting. They didn't even make that interesting. There was nothing interesting about that movie at nope. all. Nope. nope. It was God awful from beginning to end. It did. They, they got, they got everything wrong about the characters and everything wrong about the action and everything wrong about the ninjas and everything wrong about snake eyes and everything. And, and then in, in the midst of all of it, they throw in giant boa constrictors that have supernatural powers and can hypnotize people. But that's the thing. They're freaking, <laughs> anic- they're like, they're like boa go constrictors off, go that are like 80 feet long. And live in the catacombs <laughs> underneath this this place, and it's like it's not even a cobra. What the heck? Well, you know what's funny about uh, this whole argument that you're bringing up is that uh, I think the only reason people assume that he was Asian because if a character has a katana, they're automatically Asian or Japanese or something because they use a katana or a Japanese oh, piece of weaponry. That's, that's exactly um, why. <laughs> which is more. Which is more culturally insensitive than what they thought they were going to be insensitive so, about by making so the, it white. So does that mean Leonardo is also Asian? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, but what's interesting about the dynamic about him being white amongst uh, a different nation and a different nationality and being kind of outcasted and hated and talked down upon. There's a big show out right now, probably the biggest show out right now, called Shogun. And it literally is about the history of the Portuguese infiltrating Japan. And the entire plot is a white man amongst Japanese people. And people love it. People are loving it. It's one of the biggest shows out right now. Probably the biggest. And there's nothing wrong with doing that in stories like with Snake Eyes. You're breaking my heart, Bradley, because you're telling me that they took what should have been the story for a Snake Eyes movie and made it into a TV show and that it's very popular while Snake Eyes still sucks. Exactly. Big, giant, hairy... They should make make a couple of TV shows in the G.I. Joe franchise instead of doing movies. That'd be great. Yeah, like, do like, do do two TV shows from whatever popular character you want to do. And, and and then you have them appear in the movie, like do that. I mean, Paramount has the like do it. You have the budget. Go ahead. They're about to do that with the Sonic movies. Yeah, you're doing Sonic. You you have yeah. a, the Knuckles TV show coming out. Then and the, then that's gonna lead up to the third movie. So like do that. So do something like that. Like come on. It's like I don't know. It's I don't know why they're like, not doing that. With that with the Ninja either. Turtle franchise already. So do that. Like come on. Like, oh, I don't know why they aren't doing it with Mortal Kombat either. Mortal Kombat needs like a few shows. You could be doing a shit. Ton we know, of we know Mortal David Kombat as right? we know as uh, David. He, the guy from Warner Bros. He, he, he doesn't like spending too much money. It's, it's either Game of Thrones or DC stuff for him. That's it. It's Mortal yeah. Kombat. What do you mean? You hey, it's WB. You, you, hey, you gotta tell them. You know, to spend the money. The guy's green. Do do you can if they can spend the money for. Elongated CG scenes with caught with Kong and Suko. I think you can pretty much do that. 
That's what I'm like. like I, I, the the last Mortal Kombat movie was chopped up into ten thousand pieces. You could tell by watching it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I would love a Mortal Kombat TV show for HBO. To, um, eight episodes or, or ten, whatever you want to do. Mostly, it's like eight episodes nowadays for TV. Well, yeah, like do that. Like, I don't understand why studios don't take opportunity. Yeah, let's make a franchise that like a couple of TV show for these popular characters well, and then have them know, show up in the movie. It's, it's whatever. Well, you know, with every studio, you have you know, we you spend less to make more. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, okay, that's true, how yeah. that works. That's how yeah. that works. That's like you that's be like, confused yeah, when like, the characters show I, up I out of nowhere. I don't want to spend money to make money. No, cold Blumhouse. <laughs> I don't need a building. I just you see that? You see Blumhouse. I get Blumhouse. Get <laughs> the thing about Blumhouse. They get cheap actors, and, and that's how they make the money back on the box office. Yeah, the first so, time director yeah. to do Mortal Kombat because that's a yeah, great that's idea. a bad that was a bad idea. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Mortal Kombat's not important enough to have good actors in. What are you talking about? <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio as Scorpion, as Raiden. Ill, Ill no. <laughs> Get over here. Get over Ac here. Academy Award winner right now. Dude, we the just talked about the Come over here. Oh I want Jeremy Like, how you got an Academy Award winner after in Mortal Kombat and you, and you messed up his scenes? Like, come I want on. Jeremy Irons. Irons as Raiden. Dude, we just talked about Snake Eyes. Like, that. no, that's no. No, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Snake Eyes should have been a TV show, matter of fact. Like, Jesus. <sighs> Oh, All right, I would have if there was if Snake Eyes was a TV show, I would watch that like for sure. But like a movie, this tomb you can't. No, do... if it was a TV show, they would ruin that too, and it wouldn't make yeah, it probably. season mm. one, and it would be like eight episodes long, and it would suck horribly, and they wouldn't have got to the giant boa constrictors until episode eight, and then they would have thought they did something, and they didn't. So. <laughs> Look, look, I'd rather I'd rather have to deal with like an hour and a half of watching the freaking movie than having to watch like eight episodes of nonsense to get to the same place. Let's just admit, they don't, they don't know what they're doing with that property. That's just the that's problem. Eight, that's eight weeks of torture. Hell no. Right. They just don't no, know what they're they don't know what to do with G.I. Joe. And here's why. Because they don't want to make G.I. Joe American. That's the point. They but, don't want G.I. Joe to be an American special ops force that you know that goes against terrorism because it's not politically correct enough and the reality is gi joe is the code name for america's america's top special forces team that's what it is they go against cobra the ruthless or terrorist organization uh you know bent on ruling the world all this other stuff, trying to trying to throw all this other stuff into a military property and, and like demilitarize it almost and make it something else is ridiculous. It's OK. It's OK. I mean, look at Top Gun. Top Gun had a, had a successful sequel. And yeah, that was amazing. You can. They have, didn't that was one of the best what experience Top I had Gun in a long was. time. You tell you know, me they're afraid to put a, an American flag in there and have them wear. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're not afraid look of that. At, because look, you know, look at every Trump Michael Bay movie. movie. Look at every Michael Bay movie that does that. <laughs> like 13 hours. I mean, I, I kind of, I, I don't know. I mean, Top, I mean, Top Gun doesn't have a, a villain per se because we don't know who the enemy really was in that movie. So. I mean, it's still, I get, I get the point, though. If people still um, want to see in Indiana Jones fight Nazis, why can't they do right. the same thing with Cobra? Like right. the terrorist right. organization. Like right. I don't think. Well, dude, I think there's people. There's, 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 there are, there have been stories for the last few years. You know, since they, since they started making the G, the GI Joe classified action figures, the six inch figures that I have, uh, that I love, and I love those figures. But the thing is, is like. Cobra Commander, there's been different versions of Cobra Commander over the years. There's obviously the classic metal helmet, you know, look. Right. But there's also the hooded Cobra Commander look. The problem is, is they have not made a hooded Cobra Commander action figure for the last, I don't know how many years. Because oh, yeah. there was this note that was apparently going around Hasbro for the longest time that they couldn't do it because it looked too much like a KKK uh thing and it's like it does no it doesn't look anything like that it's a hood yes but you know but that's thing is like marvel all of a sudden start like they've got characters that have hoods and everything else it's like why are we just singling out gi joe like they did something bad 
Dude, y'all, uh, y'all, y'all, remember, yeah. y'all remember those Death Eaters in uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? Right? <laughs> like, this is dumb. <laughs> this is just, you know, it's like, it's like Cobra Commander sometimes wears a hood. And, oh, I don't know. He's a freaking terrorist, horrible, evil person. And you're worried that somebody might, like, think that he looks like he's in the KKK? That's probably the least of his worries. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> Just, just go. Honestly, like you, you can. There's movies out there that just can go all out. Just go all out. It's like it, it's really not that. I think people, will, people will. I don't know. People will watch it. And like, I think it's just so worried. So I think they're worried about like the littlest things, like the, like those things that you mentioned could affect their profitability of a movie. That's that's how it boils down to. Yeah. Like they don't want to go full all out. Like. 100% true to the source material. They got to make these little changes so it could be uh, um, acceptable with our current society, unfortunately. Yeah. But a lot of that's changing, though. I'll tell you what. People are more and more. I, I, I'll i be honest with you. I just watched. Did you guys watch this last week's episode of uh, Family Guy? Oh, the way is no. I, I, I haven't which watched. one is it? So I was actually very surprised because this week's episode of Family Guy dealt with uh, – uh, actors being able to play different roles, you know, oh, okay, that, okay, okay. like that, you know, they're not native to, you know, I mean, and uh, I was actually really surprised. I mean, because one, uh, I mean, I, I love his humor, Seth MacFarlane's humor, but Seth MacFarlane is why is widely known as being, you know, uh, very progressive and, you know, uh, on the left. And so like the fact that he wasn't that he's apparently not worried about that kind of political correctness. I mean, now you could argue that family guy in general is not very politically correct, but you know, the fact that like they did a whole episode though, about uh, people playing different roles and, you know, not having to be whatever. And that was weird. Did you guys hear what Billy D Williams said this week? Oh, yes. I, oh did. My God. I did. When I read, I did. When I that, read that, that to me like, is going on, too bro. far. Really? Like that's like, too far. That's wrong. Like, that was wait, wrong. what did you say? What did you say? Oh, hold on. Let me get. Let me oh, say. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, so, yeah. so Billy D. Williams came out this week and said that he feels that actors should be able to portray blackface. Oh no! No, because. This is Billy D. Williams. Because he did, yeah, he Williams said that on a podcast. On a podcast, which is crazy. That's taking it to, I think, an extreme that doesn't have to be taken to. Uh, but yeah, that was really weird and out of left field. Um, like, no, no. That's crazy. I was, well, I looked at that. I was like, I had to do a double take. I was like, wait, what? Outside of Robert Downey Jr. and Tropic Thunder, absolutely not. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, like Robert Downey Jr. The, like Robert Downey Jr. was like, I don't care. I, I did it, but, <laughs> but right. I'm never gonna. I don't I, care. I, but, I did it. but I'm never gonna do it again. So this like, is the only time you're ever gonna see that. Robert Downey Jr. is just like, uh, uh, yep, I did it. I'm Iron Man. What? Yeah, yeah, like, I'm Iron Man. A, I looked at the replies. I looked at the replies on um. Like the first thing I saw was on threads and stuff. So like when I first saw this post, um. Someone post someone the, the replies so like these 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 guys are, are a bunch of fools. Someone said, "Hell yeah, brother! Hot damn!" <laughs> the gift from Tropic Thunder. I'm like, what? oh my! I'm like, you gotta be kidding me! And then this one other dude, <laughs> this man is 87 years old. Why y'all even entertain this foolishness? <laughs> <laughs> If black is in and this, yeah, like, like I like Willie, but come on, bro. no, no actors, no, bro, no. That's, that's, that's wrong, far, that's wrong, I, wrong, I, wrong. That is, that is wrong. Going too far, but that, but I do see. Why do you think way. Hollywood is scared to do it? Hold on, wait, what, what, what was that, uh, Austin? I said I. And that's going too far, but I agree with you, Enosh. You know, that's going too far, but I see, I see the point. I think that's trying to be made there, in that, like, you know, look. All of a sudden, we we've, we've gotten to this place where you can't play a character unless you are somewhat similar to the character in real life. A straight right. guy can't play a gay a, a gay person. A gay you know like the and on and on and even but gay like people that. can play straight people. Right, right. Yeah. And you know, and and even scenes have gotten very specific. Right. I mean, I remember when that uh, the Exodus 
movie came out that Ridley Scott did a few years ago, and everybody oh, flipped out. No, and said, no. Christian Bale's not Egyptian. Joel Edgerton's not Egyptian. They're not, you know, all this other stuff. It's like, it's a movie. <laughs> if you got good actors playing the part, it's called suspending your belief. I don't have well, to <laughs> that was the least of the movies. Concerned. Yeah, that's the least of that movie's problems. <laughs> hey, that movie was actually good. So, uh, I'm happy for you. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Okay, so let me let me ask you this, Austin. Since you said this, and this is not not me trying to stir the pot, but I just want to know where your mind is at. So, would you be okay if a if a white person played a Hispanic or Mexican? Would you be okay with that? How white are I mean if they're How know, white are they? <laughs> that's already that's already been done. That's been done recently. That's been done recently. And 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 no one no one really made a big deal about it. Is gonna be playing uh, you know, Cheech from Cheech and Sean. Then we you know, there's a little bit of a of an issue there, <laughs> you know. How white are they? <laughs> I'm look, but if they're you know uh, on the Charlie, side, Charlie, they should play Cheech. Cheech. <laughs> I don't see why not. So, as a Hispanic and and half Hispanic, half Filipino, doesn't matter to me. It's been done. It was recently done. Uh, David Ayers did it in the Tax Collector. Shia, Shia, you did, yep. he's pretty. Right. He's a pretty white guy, and he and was he playing. He he, <laughs> didn't, he wasn't playing an actual Hispanic. But it, the the premise is that he grew up in that area. If you listen to how he's talking and how he's he was portraying himself, by, by the community. Correct. And, and, so and he basically adapted. I, th I think uh, on some of these things, we're we're, we're splitting the hairs and getting too offended. I mean, these are these are movies. These well, those are characters. Are, that's a completely different thing than someone putting on brown makeup and being a Mexican. Though, like you can represent someone being in that neighborhood because, like, I grew up in you know, really bad neighborhoods. And I have a lot of dialect from those neighborhoods and I'm not a part of those, you know, and you can represent that uh, sort of demographic because it, it really is out there, especially in, uh, in America. Um, but to have a different race, you know, put on a different uh, color of makeup to represent a different color of, uh, you know, skin, I think that's really just stupid. Yeah, and it takes away it takes away an opportunity that's just for someone that actually is a part of that ethnic ethnicity to represent a story of the of, the, of their ethnicity. You know. Yeah, I think, I think there's a difference stupid. between I think there's a difference between you know having somebody portray uh, something different, but you know, but I mean, I I think I think it just depends upon the situation. I I don't think that there's like yeah. one answer to that. I don't think that there's a cookie cutter answer to say, well, it's always got to be this way or it's always got to be this way. I, I look at it as, you know, look, if 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 you have a role for a Hispanic person, for example, right, and that's what it's supposed to be, well, then you're probably going to go down that route in your casting, right? You're, you're going to try to find the best person. Like, if, if it's specific to that role that they need to be Hispanic, well, then you're probably going to try to cast somebody of that ethnicity, Right. And that's, right. You know, that's which, is fine, like, which is fine, which is fine. But like, vibe. but like this idea of like just changing things randomly, like the snake eyes thing, for example, like there's, there's no need for that. There, there's, yeah. And it didn't add anything to the story. In fact, it took away from the story because now there was less of a tension between snake eyes and storm shadow because they didn't include a major piece to that. Right. Um, but then there are times where like it may not matter, right? Like and and it and it doesn't matter. So it just you know, I, I think I think that it all just has to be uh I think if we're just like open and honest about things instead of like acting like we have to fill some kind of criteria or that we have to uh appease somebody with, with something, instead of doing all that, why don't we just make good casting choices and decisions and you know, it, it doesn't have to be as hard as people are making it be right now. Can I can I address Elsa in the chat because she seems oh. really upset about uh, the question I asked Austin. Oh I, yeah, which I don't, I didn't mind by the way. That yeah, it's <laughs> like, and please forgive me because I, to let you know, I'm I'm a black man and I don't what. I don't know, I'm I mean, for people that don't know, she probably doesn't know, but oh. um, I don't. I didn't know that let that um 
Latinas or Hispanics can, you know, I mean, I've, I've met some Mexicans that are like have brighter skin tone and stuff like that. But no, I don't know the 100 percent difference between Hispanics and Latinas. And if there are, I apologize. I did not mean to insult you guys. This is just me. Oh, no. I'm, un- I'm uncultured. So it's like I was just no, asking, no, no. you know, I was just asking Austin a question of like if he would be OK if, if that certain situation happened, not to throw shade or like. And also, I haven't been outside the country because you also asked me that. No, I've never been to Europe. I've never been to Spain, Portugal, Italy, or whatever. So. Right. Right. And yet, no, I completely and I completely understand where you're coming from. I I didn't take you know any any offense to it. I mean, look, that's that's why I responded with you know how why and I agree with Enos. You know, it's it's kind of a it's a you know um, thing by thing. You know, it's a you know it's it's not you can't answer it for the whole you know like you know like, you know if you're doing a biopic right on Cheech and Sean and stuff and you know you're probably gonna want to cast people that look like the care like look like the real people look like you know. If you're doing something like the tax collectors, you know that that's more of, of telling that type of story or that type of thing. Okay. Gonna do that. So I think it's it's just very dependent, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, even I, I could be wrong. I mean, George Clooney plays uh, isn't he technically playing a, a Mexican or, or Latino in um, what's the one he did with uh... that? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> um, no, the one he did with uh, Tarantino. Oh, Just Till Dawn. So when it comes to now, here here's another question that'll that'll take this even further. Now, if this if somebody is trying out for a biopic, does that actor need to be that um, need to be the race that the actual person is or not? Like say Martin Luther King Jr. or that yeah. Now that I think it it, it that's where you, you know you want to just out of respect for the for the person you know that you're portraying right. Um, you know that you you want to be respectful of, of all that, and I think yeah, people would have issues if if you wanted to do that type of stuff. Like if you know, I, I remember what there was. This was actually real. There was an executive that wanted Julia Roberts to play Harriet Tubman. That was an what? Uh 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 uh. Oh no no. <laughs> no. That they wanted Julia Roberts. To, so yes, I completely you know that's the you know. Way too far, you know. All these types of things. You want to stick to uh, to the source material, right? If there is source material. Hmm. On that note, um, we are about the two hour mark, and uh, I am. I, I think we're all we've pretty much exhausted this topic uh, before. <laughs> yeah. Before we start really probably digging ourselves in the holes that we really don't want to be in. Uh, thank, can you, I just... thank you, Billy D. Williams. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate yeah, thanks, Billy. By the way, by the way, uh, totally non-controversial here whatsoever. O.J. Simpson passed away today. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Landon, Landon messaged me, and I, Landon messaged me and made me laugh because he said he, I, I don't know where he got this thing that that says that this happened, but Landon literally sent a message earlier that said that. Uh, before he passed, he tweeted out uh, that OJ tweeted out, "Yeah, I did that shit." <laughs> well, I think it's comforting knowing that OJ's uh, killer is now finally put to rest. I think they found him. In that. They found him just in time. His grade will. <laughs> if I did do it, dot dot dot. Oh, <laughs> that, there's a book to write, isn't it? If I I didn't do it, but if I did. <laughs> this is exactly, exactly how, how I would have done it. I would have done it. Exactly. Oh God. All right, now I will say just, just before we end, they did come out with a, a, a few uh, descriptions of the uh, preview that was shown of Deadpool and Wolverine. Just real quick, I thought one okay. of the cool things that was um, he's he the description starts out with Wilson. Um, it opens with Wade Wilson riding a car with children. He says he might want kids someday. But that he doesn't have a lot of vaginal sex. Uh, Rob, De- he reconnects with Rob Delaney's Peter, who tries to convince him to get back into the superhero game. He comes home to a surprise party and catches up with Colossus. Colossus shares that he's been watching the Great British Bake Off, and that show saved me from suicide. <laughs> Wilson explains that, <clears throat> oh, because Blind Al is there. 
And uh, Wilson explains that cocaine is the only thing Kevin Feige says is off limits. Blind Al replies by coyly saying, "Do you want me to build a snowman?" <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. <clears throat> That's uh, awesome. The footage ends with, uh, oh, actually, there may be some new footage here. Wade is captured by the TVA. He wakes up uh, to an officer. He tells uh, he tells the pool that he's been chosen for a special mission to save the sacred timeline. Footage of Chris Evans, Captain America, is shown, and Deadpool salutes him. We then see a clip of Chris Hemsworth as Thor crying over Deadpool's body. Uh, then uh, the TVA agent tells Deadpool this happens in the distant future. Um, <laughs> Deadpool goes, I'm Marvel Jesus, looks at the camera and says, fuck you, Fox, I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> Wow, and that's that's, that's brilliant. That's a tier writing. I am excited. <laughs> See, and I want to mention this too because Perp. I don't know if you're still watching this, but another reason why I'm still I'm more excited for Wolverine is because as, as a kid that grew up with Hugh Jackman, as Wolverine, finally getting him in that suit and in that yeah. mask and him a oh. part of the MCU. Fuck oh. Joker too. Fuck Joker oh. too. Like, Thank you. Take that all day. Like seriously. Thank you. Yep, I can't believe that I'm saying that about a DC property, but yep, I agree with you. Give give me Deadpool all day long over that Joker 2 nonsense. Uh, Deadpool and Hugh... Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, come on. Right! <laughs> oh, and so get Deadpool and Wolverine. If it was just them, I'd be in. Billion dollars, bro. <laughs> uh, it's going to be it's gonna be gorgeous. It is. It is. Um, are we not going to mention that uh, the biggest piece of news today, that uh, scary movie has a reboot? I don't care. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> I do not care. I don't care either. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't let anybody tell you that your fandom doesn't matter. and Don't tell them that their fandom doesn't matter, but seek to have good conversations and treat everybody with respect. If you do that, there'll always be a place for you in the Poindexter Lounge. I want to thank our, I want to thank everybody who was here, man. We had a ton of people come in through here. Uh, so uh, thank you. Thank you to the 77 people that are still watching. Uh, I appreciate hey all of you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you guys for uh, for just <laughs> sticking around and talking to me about all this nerd stuff and having uh, having a good time doing it. So lots of uh, interesting things, you know, G.I. Joe movies, Transformer movies, got all kinds of craziness happening and Deadpool will win them all. But um Hey, until next time, stay nerdy and, you know, like, don't, don't listen to Lando. Don't, don't, don't listen to Billy D. Williams. That's, it's just not a good idea. All right. See you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>